And a lot of us are talking about that people want social connection, but being completely unstructured in your flexibility also doesn't provide that to organizations. It doesn't help that I come on Monday to the office, you come on Tuesday, and we still don't see each other. And I'm wondering whether we are not seeing that organizations are unsure about what their workplace strategy is going to look like and whether this uncertainty is actually causing more harm than good. And I wonder if we're not confusing employees. Hello, Ron, and welcome to HR Hot Topics, a show in which we we talk about different articles that have been in the news and we discuss their impact on HR professionals in general, but also on the future of work. With me is Dieter Veldman and I'm Eric van Vulpen. <music> Our first story today is about Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs wants workers back to the office uh, five days a week. This was the CEO of Goldman Sachs who wanted everyone to be in the office in their New York headquarters. And what is interesting is that this CEO, Solomon, called remote work an aberration. I do not think that for a business like ours, which is an innovative, collaborative apprenticeship culture, this is not ideal for us and this is not the new normal. And after he gave that call uh, the next day or on Monday in the office, out of the 10,000 people that were supposed to come in, less than 5,000 actually showed up. So Dieter, what do you think? Does he have a point? Eric, I think it's not a straightforward answer. And I think what we are seeing at the moment is a lot of big companies are following suit. I know Google, as well as Apple, also communicated earlier this week around the approaches that they are taking to get back to work. What is interesting for me, though, is if we look at some of the research on remote work, is one of the key things is that it's usually executives and leaders that want people back in the office, whilst it is employees that are actually enjoying the flexibility. So my question to you is, is flexibility then not an important component of our employee value proposition? That's a good question. And what I find interesting is I'm wondering why do executives want to be in the office and, you know, kind of the normal workers not want to be in the office? Because I can imagine that if you just have a kind of a standardized job and you know the tasks that you need to do, you know, you'd rather do them from home because, you know, you know what's coming anyway. But these ex executives, they, they work on all kinds of various different projects. Uh, they might, mm -hmm. you know, want to uh, do some management by walking around, get some new ideas and then implement it directly. So it's probably also the content of the role that they're in that, you know, justifies coming to the office more than, you know, if you have a more standardized job. I spoke to CEO a couple of months ago, Eric, and he made that exact point to say he struggles with remote work around feeling the pulse of his business because he cannot walk around and feel how things are going. Now, I think what is going to become really interesting is the point that you make around, but who does the work? Where does the work take place? And a lot of us are talking about that people want social connection, but being completely unstructured in your flexibility also doesn't provide that to organizations. It doesn't help that I come on Monday to the office, you come on Tuesday, and we still don't see each other. And I'm wondering whether we are not seeing that organizations are unsure about what their workplace strategy is going to look like and whether this uncertainty is actually causing more harm than good. And I wonder if we're not confusing employees. I think that is a good point. And what I think, especially pertaining to what this CEO said about, you know, the role of innovation and, you know, remote work versus innovation, I think there is something to say about, you know, setting certain standards where mm. you say, you know, come into the office two days a week, but, you know, team A, at least, you know, try to be there on a Wednesdays because then also your direct colleagues are there. But I think at the same time, when you talk about innovation, it is very much these kind of coffee corner talks and mm. conversations that you have these random interactions that spark new ideas and, you know, enable you to come up with a new innovative idea. I think what's going to be very interesting to see how it unfolds is two things. I think the first thing is around how office design and workplace locations change. And we're already starting to see that trend. A lot of companies are coming out and actually changing their setup to support this more creative social connection type of workplace. So the office is becoming a place where I go to connect and to collaborate and not so much a place where I go to go and work and actually sit down. I and mean, I think that's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. I do believe there is a point to be made around, you know, we said earlier, what is the work? What is the content and the context of the work? And I think there is a point to be made, you know, when you are writing an article, it is sometimes better, you know, to be at home sitting in your hoodie and just have focus time without the distractions that you do find in an office environment. And I think we need to strike this balance. And is organizations going to be clear about that expectation? Because surely that will become something that potential employees consider when they want to see if I want to work for that company or not. 
Yeah, and I think organizations should clearly mm. consider that and clearly communicate this and have a clear vision on this and not, you know, do one month one thing and another month another thing. And I think as we're now coming out of the of the pandemic, knocking on wood here, is that, you know, as a company, you should have a clear policy on it. If you don't yet, you know, you're too late and you should really mm. start putting it into place. At the same time, we know that remote work works. People are more productive. People report more autonomy, more happiness. So I think there is a very strong case to be made that if your organization allows for it, that you also mm. allow it. Um, these are, I'd be curious to know what, what are some of the criteria, you know, in which organization could remote work work better versus, you know, hybrid work? What are some of the considerations organizationally wise? I think, Eric, firstly, what is the actual work and the activities and the tasks that needs to be done? I think that is an important consideration. I think it's within that context that we also find, you know, usually when we refer to hybrid work, we are predominantly referring to knowledge workers or professional services. I think it becomes very difficult when we start talking about your blue collar workforce where the actual job is on site and it's got something to do with location. I'll use my wife as an example. She works in a science lab. She can't do that from home and I hope she never works from home doing that in our kitchen. But I think there's the first criteria around what is the work. The second thing we do need to talk about is what does the organization have appetite for? And I want to also get back to the article around Goldman Sachs. I think it's not one answer necessarily for the whole organization. I think we will find that smaller teams and departments within the policy guidelines that we put down start kind of refining it in terms of a rhythm that will work for them. I think trying to centrally control this is going to be very, very difficult and very, very tough. But I do believe that there's clarity that is required. Uh, some great reasons research done over the past couple of months, or well, actually stretching even before the pandemic in terms of years, shows us that there are certain preferences that people like to come into the office on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, which was quite interesting for me to think about. And then also that people do want to do that for a very specific reason. If I've got nothing in my, di in my diary or in my calendar, why am I coming in to work? So I really think organizations need to get back to, you know, the old word we use around what is the work, work design, then also around what do we have appetite for? What do we want to do? Do we want to be completely flexible or not? And I think also to weigh up the pros and the cons, because I think a hybrid strategy is actually very expensive. You're not cutting down on real estate. You're still finding that I have to keep my big offices going, even though for half of the time they might be empty. So I think those are some of the things that the organizations have to consider. My question to you is, do you think leaders are ready for that move? I think some leaders are. Obviously, not all of them are. And that's why we're talking about this specific story tonight. What I think is also interesting is the, the angle for you know the HR department. Because with remote working, we also see an impact on uh, potential mm. gender uh, uh, differences and uh, differences that we've already mm. been seeing may be emphasized. You know, for example, I read in the, in the, in the Guardian uh, a title that says a switch to more home working after after COVID will make uh, gender inequality worse. And I think it was telling about uh, women who will be working more from home than also mm -hmm. taking uh, taking caring tasks on them. And then males being predominantly in the office, in the action, you know, maybe even more likely to get promotions, etc. Mm -hmm. So I think that is there is also a role for, for our leaders to ensure equity in the work floor. And I think also for HR to make sure that even when we implement it, we do create and we try to work towards a more equal and and yeah yeah i think you make equality in society you make a very interesting point eric around proximity bias and i think the role that hr needs to play is also to look at what is the unintended consequences of the workplace strategy that we do put in place. I think it's natural for us. You mentioned the word inequality. There's all sorts of inequalities that will also, as much as technology unites us, there's also big differentiators in terms of the fact access to certain services. You know, I come from a part of the world where the moment you walk through the office door, everybody's got access to the same tools and the same infrastructure. But the moment that you leave the office, all of a sudden those scales don't look great. And there are people that in their natural living environments, that's not a conducive place to work from. So I think equality is a very, very key consideration that we do have to think about. On the other hand though, flexibility can be a lot more inclusive. 
because we, we often talk about the forgotten workforce, the people that only want to work in the morning or the people that can work, but I, I can't work necessarily during a particular core part of the day. I think if we do this well as HR, it actually opens up our talent strategies for great opportunities in the future. But we are going to have to really, really get down and discuss, you know, what does that look like? What are some of the unintended consequences? And I also think that leadership shift and mindset shift that we do need to make because it is more difficult managing virtual teams. That's a reality that we've seen over and over again, and it calls for a different type of skill set, which I think HR should take note of. So what do you think? Do you already have a remote working strategy in place or are you still struggling to, to identify what your next step is? We would love to read it, interact with it and learn from one another. So we're very curious what your experience is in this topic. This is our show for today. Thank you so much for watching. We had a lot of fun. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and leave us a comment down below. Have an absolutely brilliant day. Bye bye.